everyone. Today, Jesus talks about religious people who give and religious people who take. As he was teaching, he said, watch out for the legal experts. They like to walk around in long robes. They want to be greeted with honor in the markets. They long for places of honor in the synagogues and at banquets. They're the ones who cheat widows out of their homes. To show off, they show long, say long prayers. They will be judged most harshly. Then Jesus sat across from the collection box at the temple treasury and watched how the crowd gave their money. Many rich people were throwing in lots of money. And one poor widow came forward and put in two small copper coins worth a penny. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I assure you that this poor widow has put in more than everyone else who's been putting money in the treasury. All of them gave out of their spare change, but she, from her hopeless poverty, has given everything she had, even what she needed to live on. Okay, so I think it's important that we read these two stories together. They tend to get separated, and it may be to reevaluate the traditional interpretation of the widow's offering. Because we can see that all of this is part of Jesus' critique of the temple system. We've already seen how he's uh, been upset by the way it excludes foreigners, the, the, the sacrifice, sacrificial system isn't actually helpful. And now we see that there's financial uh, abuse that happens. Right? He says that these leaders cheat widows out of their homes, and then we see it happen in real time. Right? Do you really think that it's a good thing that this widow gave everything she had to live on? Is that what God wants, for her to put in these pennies and then go die? I think if we're trying to put this in modern terms, the better equivalent of what's happening here is when a, a widow sends in her social security check to some televangelist, right? Preachers who use their, their status to make themselves rich and uh, falsely promise prosperity to everyone who will send them money. Then and now, Jesus can see through these con men and these false teachers and to see what they're actually doing. Now, there is a place for selfless giving instead of selfish hoarding. And I have to acknowledge I'm saying this as someone who makes his living off of church offerings. So, you know, how much you want to trust me here is up to you. But we all have to ask, why do we give or not give? Is it to show off like some of these people here? Well, obviously that's meaningless. Do we give because it's some religious checklist to make God happy? Well, God doesn't actually need that in that sense. Uh, is the reason we don't give because of a kind of scarcity mindset or anxiety that, that we won't have enough. Sometimes there may need a, to be more trust. Or are we giving out of gratitude for God's gifts? I think that always matters and, and always is rewarded in some sense. And we're all going to be at different places in our lives financially. And it's up to us with wisdom to decide what is best and to give what we can give. And if we're giving truly to the body of Christ, what honors Christ most is taking care of the least of these. So let's be honest about what we need, what they need, what we do or don't need, and then we'll know what kind of giving God expects from us.